So in this video, we're going to walk through how we can download MySQL and how we can download the MySQL Workbench. We're then going to open up the Workbench and we're going to create a connection. And within that connection, we're then going to create a table. We're going to look at the various characteristics that we can add for different columns within that table. And then we're going to populate the table with some test data. And then in a future video, we'll be able to access this data through our web server by connecting to the MySQL table. So the first step that we're going to be taking, it will involve downloading MySQL into our computer and then also downloading the GUI for MySQL, which is the MySQL workbench. So to download MySQL, if you just want to head over to dev.mysql.com forward slash downloads and then forward slash MySQL, you'll see that there's quite a few options for us to download. So for example, we have different types of operating systems and different versions of that system. And then if you just want to follow the instructions for downloading MySQL into your computer, uh, you can do that. I would just say uh, to make a note of the password that you assign for the username of root, because that will be within the instructions, as we will later need this when it comes to creating a connection with MySQL. And then the second download we want is the workbench. So dev.mysql.com forward slash downloads forward slash workbench. And then once again, you can select your operating system. And if you just follow the instructions, you can then download the workbench into your computer. So now that we have MySQL downloaded into our computer, then we can create and populate a table that we can now query from our application. So I've opened MySQL Workbench and the first action I want to do is to create a brand new connection. So I'm just going to hit the plus sign next to MySQL Connections and this is where we can provide our very own connection name. So for my example, I'm just going to call it MySQL Database. And you just want to make note of that port. So it's 3306 and that is the, uh, that is the default port that we have for MySQL. And we will also need this later when it comes to connecting to our database. And then we can also see the username of root. And before we go ahead and create this connection, I just want to test the connection to make sure that we can connect to a data store uh, through this port. So once again, we'll have the username of root. We just want to enter that same password that we put in for when we downloaded MySQL. And we can see that it is now working. So if I just hit OK, and we can head into our database connection by double clicking it. And if we ensure that the tab of schemas has been selected on the top left, the second tab, we can see we have the default schema of SYS. And this contains sort of dummy data that we can use with MySQL just for playing about with. But I just want to create our very own schema for our store. So I'm going to right click and hit new schema. And I'm going to provide the schema name of my store. And then I'm going to hit apply and then apply. If we just close this down, we can now access my store and we can hit tables and then create new table. And this is where we're going to store the addresses of the customers for our store. So the name of the table, I'm just going to call this addresses. And then just below addresses, we can start to create these individual columns that we have within our table. So there's four different columns that we have. So we'll have the ID and this will be the primary key. And we will need an ID for when we want to query very specific rows of our database. So I'm going to select the PK uh, checkbox, which means primary key. I'm going to select NN, which means not null. So this value cannot be empty. And then I'm also going to select AI on the right hand side. And this stands for auto increment. So every time we create a new row within our table, this value is going to increment by one. I'm then going to add the actual columns of data that we will be requiring. So we'll have a number, which will be an integer. And this will also be not null. We'll have a street, which will be up to 45 characters. And this will also be not null. And then we'll also have a postcode, also up to 45 characters. And finally, this will also be not null. So if I just hit apply down below and then apply once more, we can now create our table called addresses with these four columns that we require. And this is very much moving towards the, the sort of data store that we would otherwise expect. So I'm just going to query uh, our table by, by writing select star from my store dot addresses. And down below in the result grid, we can now see that this table is empty. So I'm just going to quickly populate this table by writing a few insert statements using SQL. So typically we would write in, insert into my store dot addresses. And then we want to provide a number, street and postcode. 
and then we say the values are going to be 742 and then evergreen TC and then SP1 and I'm just going to execute this SQL and then if I select star from my store.addresses we can now see that row exists within the table and then I'm going to do this two more times so that we have three rows within our table. If I finish off by selecting star from my store dot addresses, we can see we have three rows. We have 742 Evergreen Terrace, SP1. Then we have 301 Cobblestone Way, BD1. And then lastly, 57 West Street, WD1. So we can also see on the left hand side, the ID has been incrementing by one automatically. We don't actually have to specify that, but MySQL will be doing that for us. So this is the core data that we have within our data store. And now we're going to connect our application to this data store. And then we're going to be using the controller, allow some queries to be performed on this table so we can obtain individual addresses as well as all the addresses in one go.